I have the pleasure today of introducing all of you to Dr. Matthew Gordley. Uh, he is our guest speaker. He is the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. He has served as the inaugural Dean of the College of Learning and Innovation at Carlow University since 2015. In addition to leading the work of the college, Dr. Gordley holds a faculty appointment as Associate Professor of Theology within the Humanities Department and teaches courses in Biblical Studies and related areas. Prior to joining Carlo, Dr. Gordley serves, served as an Associate Dean, a Department Chair, and a faculty member at Regent University. He holds a PhD from the University of Notre Dame, a Master in Divinity from Alliance Theological Seminary, and a BA from Wheaton College. There is a lot more to learn about Dr. Gordley, and you can read his full biography at carlo.edu. But with that said, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Gordley. Thank you, Nicole. Sure. Yeah. And uh, thank you to all of you for taking some time to join us uh, to learn about this exciting new chapter in the academic life of Carlo. Uh, I plan to give just a little background on the new college, uh, the goals of the College of Arts and Sciences, and then really to introduce my department chairs to you to talk briefly about their departments. So uh, Amy, can you advance the slide? The College of Arts and Sciences uh, represents the merger of two of Carlo's colleges. The College of Learning and Innovation, over which I've been dean since 2015, and the College of Leadership and Social Change, which was led by Dean Stephanie Wilsey. When Dean Wilsey announced in the spring that she was taking on a provost position elsewhere, she suggested that with all the changes occurring, both related to the pandemic, enrollment changes at the university, and the future of higher education, a merger of the two colleges might be a great way to embody our strategic plan vision, to unleash imagination, to transform lives for a just and merciful world. So President Mellon, President uh, Provost Ghosh, Dean George of the College of Health and Wellness, and myself, we all met over several weeks in the spring and agreed that this was a tremendous opportunity for Carlo. We also agreed it was vitally important to roll it out with clear goals for what this merger could accomplish. Ultimately, with the help of a faculty-led restructuring task force, we arrived at a new department structure for a College of Arts and Sciences, which would enable us to do uh, the things you see on this slide here. Uh, first, promote creative interplay across academic disciplines. Recognizing that the future of higher education and really the kinds of graduates needed in our world are not narrow specialists, but individuals with broad learning that spans a range of subjects. Uh, we set out to enhance meaningful connections across the colleges. So we already collaborated well across the colleges, uh, for example, thinking about our health sciences programs, but the new structure creates even more opportunities to do that seamlessly and efficiently. We wanted to enable the unleashing of imagination in career-focused liberal arts. As prospective students and their parents are, are looking more and more into professional programs and less into traditional liberal arts majors, there still is an incredible opportunity for us to infuse the values and skills of liberal arts within every program and to do this in creative ways uh, for each program. Uh, we also set out to accelerate interdisciplinary collaboration. I mentioned uh, our faculty are already very collaborative, but the new college structure, uh, especially joining multiple disciplines into the same department, is intended as a catalyst to accelerate that collaboration. A couple of uh, examples of how that works. Uh, you'll hear about our Department of Art, Communication, and English, where uh, our comm majors are now going to be able to uh, take classes related to digital media and animation and see how those disciplines uh, can inform one another. We also wanted to be able to continue to offer innovative delivery models. So Carlo is a leader in innovation, uh, particularly in our apprenticeship program offered through our education department. But we also have just rolled out a three-year undergraduate degree program. Uh, this fall was a soft launch. We're recruiting now in earnest for next fall. And we've also rolled out accelerated master's programs linked to those three-year programs. 
So the new structure enables us to roll these out in other areas and also to do so in more integrated ways across the university. So all those goals really lead to that final point on the screen here, uh, to being able to respond in creative and coordinated ways to changes in our region, changes in our market, in response to student demand, changing workforce needs, and the changes and challenges in our society. I mean, even the things that have emerged since the decision to uh, create the new college. So to me, all these goals can only be achieved through the work of our faculty. And this is the thing that has me the most excited about the new College of Arts and Sciences. It's our faculty leaders. The six department chairs you are about to meet. These are individuals who it appears to me have wholeheartedly embraced uh, the goals of the new college and they have taken the lead in six new departments. So at this point, um, I'll invite each of them to share for a moment about an opportunity they see in their departments. So um, what we'll do is we'll just progress right through the list here um, without further introduction from me and then there'll be time for questions at the end. Um, so at this point, I'll hand it over to Sandy Demola, who's chair of our Department of Analytical, Physical, and Social Sciences. Sandy. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Dean Gordley. So as Dean Gordley said, my name is Sandy Demola. I teach in the program in political science and public policy, which is a program that I chaired for about six years. And with the merger of our two colleges, I became department chair of a department called Analytical, Physical, and Social Sciences. And this department is the home for the graduate and undergraduate programs in social work and the undergraduate programs in data analytics and mathematics, political science and public policy, and in chemistry. And in talking about this department, it may seem to you that we are probably the most, um, and we are probably the most diverse department in terms of the array of disciplines that we have. But I think that we're all connected in our department because we have a unique opportunity to think through how things that are, happen in the physical world may create challenges or problems that are solved in the social world. Um, and so we have, for example, um, individuals in chemistry who are looking at water quality and lead levels. And we know that that presents problems, particularly for certain um, communities that are underserved who may be paying more for poor quality of water. It presents problems for children who are experiencing um, higher uh, levels of lead. And so these are issues that are solved in the social world, either through social work or through public policy. Um, one of the other things I'm very interested in in our department is the development of our Center for Data Analytics and statistics. And this is a center that was created um, by our program chairs in data analytics and mathematics uh, to find ways to assist nonprofits in telling their story with data so that they can leverage the impact that they have in the community and then, of course, create better funding opportunities for themselves. This is an exciting week um, for our department because on Friday we have a site visit for our, from our uh, undergraduate social work accreditor um, who is looking at the reaccreditation for our undergraduate social work program. And we will then have two fully accredited programs in our department, the graduate and undergraduate social work programs. And we're going to be a candidate for accreditation, hopefully for our program in chemistry. And so I should turn this over to Dr. Lou Boyle, who is department chair for the Department of Art, Communication and English. Thank you, Sandy. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to speak with you. Um, what I thought I would do is just sort of give a broad overview of what we're working on. Um, as you've already heard, we've, we've been a department for about a month, so we are really still just starting, uh, and we're starting a number of initiatives. Rather than bore you with the initiative list, what I thought I would do is speak in broader terms. Um, as Dr. Gordley had said, this does give us some wonderful new opportunities to work in more interdisciplinary ways between what had been um, single individual departments. So for example, uh, Carlo has always, always had a strong representation and been strong in the creative arts. Our art program, our art department, both with studio art, of course, the gallery in the commons, 
And then on the English side, our creative writing programs have always had a really, really strong footing, both in the region and really nationally. Uh, our creative writing programs, we have undergraduate creative writing. Uh, we have our graduate Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing, which itself has an Irish component. Students spend half the year studying with Irish writers, and they go to Dublin for two weeks and study with those writers. In uh, the other half of the year, they spend uh, studying Amer with American writers. Mm -hmm. We have also, as part of our creative writing program, have always had a very strong community relationship through our Mad Women in the Attic program. These are writing workshops for any woman in the Pittsburgh community, but in fact, now we are broadening it and trying to get more of a national presence through online and virtual workshops. Uh, this is an absolutely wonderful program run by our distinguished writer in residence, uh, Jan Beatty. Uh, if anyone out there, if anyone would like to join the Mad Women, uh, Jan would I'm sure welcome uh, the opportunity to talk to you about it. But my point is, but now that art and the creative writing piece are coming together, that's going to allow us to really, really expand. So for example, just a few specifics, we can now begin to talk to students about things like graphic novels. We can talk to students about not only media arts, but writing for media arts. Graphic design, of course, writing and the visual, we now have opportunities to be able to work together on those kinds of initiatives. Our communication, what had been the communication department, of course, is also part of our new department. This will also allow us to expand even further. So things like public relations writing, things like writing that would be for uh, marketing and communication writing, which formerly had been handled by the communication department. We can now come together, all three of us, so talking to students, showing students, giving them more internship opportunities with not only you know, writing, but designing documents, designing uh, and writing for the organizational world. Uh, we formally had a professional writing major, which we discontinued, but we do plan to try to rejuvenate that. That was a series of courses that specialized in everything from technical writing, to corporate writing, to grant writing. Having these three departments become one will certainly allow us more opportunities to sort of carry on that kind of work. And of course, we'll give students a lot more opportunities to carry over in terms of the kind of writing they want to do for the professional world. I suppose I should also mention, of course, liberal arts department, you know, our English, we are not going to stop asking students to read books. We are not going to stop asking students to take a look at the great writers the world has known. But we think in terms of these three departments now, there will be far more opportunity to talk about creativity, to study great writers, and to practice all of these kinds of skills. In a nutshell, that's where we plan to go. And we're certainly looking forward to it. And uh, again, it's, it's a real, real exciting time for us. And I, I feel very fortunate that I'm here at this moment. Given everything that's going on, there are still some wonderful, wonderful, uh, hopeful opportunities for us. So again, I do thank you for this time. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Frank Ammer, the chair of the Department of Biological Sciences. Hi, everybody. Like Lou said, my name is Frank Ammer. I'm actually a 1997 graduate of Carlo University, and I'm very fortunate that I'm actually now chairing the department that actually launched my career. So it's really exciting to, uh, to be here. This is actually the beginning of my fourth year here. Uh, since I started, uh, we've had some pretty uh, exciting changes within the department and some new additions of programs uh, that are highly collaborative. Um, a couple of these uh, I'd like to highlight. Uh, one was we converted our uh, cardiovascular perfusion program from a BS program to a BS to MS program in cardiovascular perfusion. Uh, this is in conjunction with UPMC and their subsidiary uh, Procerca. Uh, this is one of our most successful programs. Uh, we we uh, are actually able to attract some of the best and brightest uh, in this area. Uh, another uh, newer program that was a collaborative collaborative effort between uh, the Department of Biological Sciences and the Department of Psychology is in behavioral neuroscience. And we have a uh, track that's in intraoperative neuromonitoring. And this program trains neurophysiologists. Uh, it's also in conjunction with UPMC and ProCirca. And uh, I'm pretty excited. The program's growing uh, very well. I believe uh, we're somewhere around 17 majors in that, uh, that program now. 
So it, it's growing very well, and I, I think it's going to exceed our expectations in the future. Uh, another really exciting uh, collaborative uh, program is our three-year degree program in health sciences. Uh, this program will launch in fall of 2021. Uh, there are four tracks in this uh, program. They are uh, physician's assistant, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech and language pathology. Uh, these programs will actually feed directly into our new graduate level health science programs that will, that will also begin launching in uh, fall of 2021. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, some additional collaborative efforts with um, the other departments that are in our new college. And uh, I think we have a bright and brilliant future ahead of us. So I won't waste any more of your time. I'll uh, turn it over to Sue Rubrish Geisler. Um, she's the chair of the Department of Business Management, Accounting and Ethics. Thank you for your time. Hi, it's nice to have you all with us today. Um, our department has a number of majors and minors that are somewhat diverse. We have uh, majors and minors in business management, human resource management, accounting, and then we have a major in forensic accounting. But we also have a number of minors as well. These include information technology, history, philosophy, and labor and working class studies. And by the time we get together this time next year, I think I'll probably be saying that we're rolling out a new major and at least one new minor as well. So uh, as you can see, our uh, department really uh, has a good foothold on both professional studies in business as well as integration of the liberal arts because the integration of the liberal arts into the business disciplines is just critical to success in the workplace. Uh, to mirror what uh, Dr. Ammer said, uh, all of our four undergrad majors, business management, human resource management, accounting and forensic accounting, are part of the three-year degree program. So it will be possible for students to come in and finish their degrees in three years. And I think that's really exciting uh, for our, our students. And, you know, many times students have the opportunity, whether they are three-year degree students or four-year degree students or transfer students, to double major across different disciplines. In addition to the undergrad programs, we also have an MBA program. The MBA program can be finished totally online, it can be finished totally in the classroom, or students can uh, mix and match uh, to meet their learning needs. The MBA program has a number of tracks that students can specialize in if they wish. Some of these include project management, human resource management, and healthcare management. Something that is extremely exciting for our students in undergrad students in business management, although it is not an, an accounting, although it's not restricted to these majors, is the opportunity to come in and do a, into the accelerated MBA program. So once a student earns 60 credits, uh, if they are a transfer student, 30 of those 60 must be at Carlo. Uh, they can apply into the accelerated MBA program and take up to three courses as an undergrad uh, in the accelerated MBA program. They are, this is part of their undergrad tuition, so they don't pay any additional tuition as grad students. And this is very exciting because many students choose to stay with us and, and complete their MBA at Carlo. Something else that's exciting and relatively new, we have a, a graduate project management certificate, which is three classes that students can participate in. If you're in the MBA program, you can, you can take those classes as part of the track. But if you're not interested at this particular point in time, in completing a master's degree, or you already have a master's degree, um, you might want to think about the project management certificate, which is three courses and does prepare, prepare you for the certification. So uh, we're 
exploring a lot of new and exciting initiatives to be cutting edge in business management, accounting, and, and ethics, integrating the liberal arts strongly across our majors and minors. It's so nice for you to be with us today, and I will turn it over to Keely. Hi, everyone. I'm Keely Baranek, Chair of the Education Department. It's great to speak with you today. I'm just going to hit three high-level initiatives and exciting projects that we have. Um, there are a plethora, but given our time constraints, I don't want to occupy um, any more time of the meeting. The first is what uh, Dr. Gorley mentioned at the outset. That is our apprenticeship program. Two years ago, we were awarded from the United States Department of Labor the first four-year apprenticeship in the state of Pennsylvania for early childhood. And so last year, we welcomed 23 new apprentices to our program. So this is an opportunity, it's a degree pathway for those individuals who work in early childcare centers. 24 of their credits can be completed on the job. And then we offer coursework online and face-to-face, -face, but in an adult-oriented way. Um, we since then have secured significant funding, about $3 million to provide support and personnel. So we have an, an incredible apprenticeship team. This is all thanks to Ray Ann Hirsch, our program director in early childhood education. So we are welcoming 45 new apprentices this year. We retain 22 of the 23, welcome 45 more this year, and we're thrilled for what this program holds. It really speaks to diversification of teacher education, especially regionally. Um, and we do that also in other initiatives that we have, uh, especially in STEM and in secondary education in partnership with uh, Pittsburgh Public Schools. The second is the new launch, brand new program, Reading Specialist. We just launched it um, in August. We had started a dyslexia certificate last year um, to grade acclaim. So we brought on Val Pacini and her dual role. She's a reading specialist, full-time faculty member, and she also serves in our campus laboratory school. So we're thrilled to launch that and we'll be seeking accreditation through the International Dyslexia Association. And last but not least, an exciting initiative this year is a teaching artist who is joining us and she's a Carlo alum, Sarah Zeffiro, and a local artist as well. So, this is a partnership between the art gallery, the art program at Carlo, the campus laboratory school and the education department. So we're excited to see that come to fruition. Thanks so much and I'll turn it over to Dr. Chang. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, um, I'm the chair of the new department of psychology, counseling and criminology. Um, our new department uh, encompasses three undergraduate majors, psychology, behavioral neuroscience, neuropsychology track, um, and criminology, and all of which have three-year options. We also have seven minors, psychology, counseling, crisis and trauma, child development, behavioral neuroscience, criminology, and theology, as well as a number of graduate programs. We have um, four master's programs, professional counseling, which is awaiting accreditation, student affairs, um, psychology, and fraud and forensics, um, as well as a doctoral program in counseling psychology. Um, so under the, uh, a lot of the programs uh, we've sort of kept under the old umbrella of the, the former Department of Psychology of Counseling. And we've always had um, accelerated master's programs as you've heard um, from other department chairs, which means that undergraduate students have the option to start taking master's level classes um, and, and to count towards both their undergraduate and graduate degrees, which allows them to save time and money and finish their uh, master's degree sooner. Um, one of the exciting things about the new configuration of the new department is that we've adopted the master's uh, program in fraud and forensics. Um, which in the past has um, been mostly focused on accounting, um, but we're beginning to talk about um, possibly retooling it um, to focus more on white collar crime in general um, in order to create um, more pathways and more interest um, from our psychology and criminology students to <laughs> enter the uh, master's in fraud and, fraud and forensics program. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I know we're, our time is really short, so I'm going to turn it back over to Dean Gordley. Great. Well, thanks everyone. And I, I think you've been able to get a taste uh, of the energy, the excitement, and the possibility that this new college structure has created. And it's a, it creates opportunities, uh, not just for students, but really for faculty 
So I think there's an energy here and uh, the, these groupings of disciplines together is really, I think, gonna create opportunities for everyone. So I'll turn it back to you, Nicole. I know we're, we've got a few minutes left and I wanna make sure we can get to some we questions. We do have a few minutes left and, and uh, people are just excited about all the programs that we have to choose from. I do have one question here. It looks like it's pretty much directed to Dr. Baranek. And the question is, how will the collaboration of these departments support culturally relevant and culturally sustaining pedagogy? I don't know if doc, that's for Dr. Bronick or, or Dr. Gordley for you. Well, I, I can speak to it briefly. And, and uh, one thing is there are certain disciplines that actually focus on culturally relevant pedagogy. So education being one of them, uh, social work as well, psychology and counseling. So there are disciplines which really have this as part of their focus. And part of the opportunity now is for those disciplines to share those best practices with their faculty colleagues. And that's one of the things that this, the new college structure facilitates is that sharing across these disciplinary areas. So I'll let uh, Dr. Baranek speak to that if she wants to add to it. I, yeah, I think Dr. Gordley covered it really well. It, it's a core tenant in all components of our teacher education um, programs from undergraduate to graduate. We have three sort of anchoring positions and that's one of them. And that's also been a focal point of a lot of the grants that we've written and received. Um, in addition to how to be intentional with our work and ground it in culturally relevant and sustaining pedagogy um, and linguistically and recognizing linguistic differences with students as well and the teacher diversification for the pipeline so for instance we were awarded one of two institutions to partner with pps uh, with their paraprofessionals through a highly competitive process to see that their paras have an opportunity to complete certification. And these are paraprofessionals who already have bachelor's degrees who are now completing teacher search. So, and then we also in the graduate program worked very closely with Joe Roberts in psychology and we share, we several of our courses overlap and that culturally relevant piece and looking at systems as a whole, systems of oppression and, and systems that that have been maintained in all aspects from medicine to education to criminal justice system and how it leads to the school to prison pipeline. That's become an integral piece. Thank you. And one other question we have, bringing the colleges together, Dr. Gordley, has this increased the number of programs that we do have? Well, so to this point, we basically took our existing programs and figured out how we could how we could group them together in new ways. So I think the number of programs hasn't changed at the moment, but uh, as uh, Dr. Rubish Geisler uh, mentioned, there are new programs under development. And so, um, and some of these actually are, again, creative collaborations uh, across disciplinary areas. So I would say uh, stay tuned. Hopefully we can do another one of these presentations a year from now, celebrate the uh, one year birthday, birthday of our college yes. and update you on some new programs. Wonderful. And lastly, we just have two more minutes and I, this is on my mind as well. Someone is asking, how have the COVID limitations impacted these programs in the new college? And I think maybe just a few words about how the students are doing. Are they acclimate, acclimating well to the new protocols? Yeah, and I'll, I'll let, uh, I, I wish I could have some time for the chairs to, to weigh in. So we've, yeah. we've really innovated in terms of uh, how to offer face-to-face -face courses with social distancing. It's been particularly important for the lab courses where there's a lot of hands-on experience. Um, it's been important for uh, student teaching, practicum, clinical placements. Uh, it's been important for the studio classes. So we found ways to offer those uh, in hybrid modalities. Uh, we've all become better at doing Zoom meetings, uh, online learning, um, but I really, uh, my hat's off to all the faculty who've adapted. Uh, we're hearing great things from our students. We have, uh, our, our student retention numbers are really strong this fall. Uh, both returning students and new students. And I think we're off to a great start. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. We're getting a lot of uh, excitement in the chat saying thank you to all of you. Very impressive, all of the programs. Um, on behalf of myself and the, the Advancement Department, we want to thank everyone for joining us here today. And hopefully we'll see you next Wednesday. Uh, September 23rd, when we bring back a Carlo Connections favorite, it is executive chef Chuck Kerber, and he is going to talk to us a little bit about our chopping skills and go over some of his basic favorite sauces just in time for some comfort food for fall. So with that, uh, I do appreciate all of you, and uh, 
Have a fantastic day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.